For today's video, we're talking about three products from Get Ready With Me Cosmetics by Chroma Aesthetics owned by YouTuber, beauty creator, content creator, May Layu. So I've been super curious about her products because I've heard so many good things about it. So that's why I ordered three products, her main products. She actually came out with a new fixing setting spray. And I'm gonna try it out when I visit the Philippines for now. These three products is what we're trying. So I watched her video on why she created Get Ready With Me Cosmetics. And she said that it was her solution to the white space in the local market in terms of base products. So there's not a lot of base products when it comes to local brands in the Philippines which is why she came out with these. So the first item that we're talking about is the All About That Base Velvet Setting Powder. It's a long wearing setting powder that has a velvet texture, skin blurring effect. So it has oil control ingredients which is perfect for the hot and humid weather in the Philippines. So key ingredients in this product is squalane for you know boosting hydration and it also has kaolin which helps prevent clogged pores. It also has calamine which I, at first I was like why calamine lotion that's what i use to prevent itchiness when i have bug bites but as per their information sheet it actually helps control oil as well so, so for a place like the philippines with hot and humid weather oil control products are like a big thing so what i love about get ready with me cosmetics is the fact that they have everything on their packaging so at the back of the packaging you have like how to use the product down here um so it says upon opening skim off the topmost layer by gently rubbing your finger in a circular motion on the pan and then dip your makeup brush on sp or sponge lightly on the pan and allow it to pick up the product. Dust of the excess product up and apply evenly onto the skin. So I'll be using my primer and my foundation since I don't have those products from Get Ready With Me Cosmetics and then we'll apply the Milk Tint Radiant Stain Concealer and set it off with a powder. So for primer, I'm just using this Happy Skin Invisible Gel Sun Primer. I find that a lot of her products, Get Ready With Me Cosmetics, are good for everyday use so that's what i'm using all the all of my base products that i'm using right now is my everyday base products and that was her whole goal as well these products are stuff that you can use for the daily so using a you know sun gel primer to ensure that i have sun protection okay so for foundation i'm just using my chanel water fresh tint love this for everyday use super lightweight and just blurs out imperfection. Whenever I'm using the velvet setting powder, I like to use it with something that's a little more sheer to maybe a little medium coverage. I don't like using it for full coverage foundation because of the fact that the powder has a blurring effect too, so it adds another layer of, you know, to blur out any imperfections that I have. Whenever I'm using something full coverage, I prefer using a translucent powder. I have some redness on my um, brow area because I blocked earlier today. So this is just one layer of the Chanel Water Fresh Tint. Like I said, it's just to even out my skin tone. We're gonna let the Get Ready With Me All About That Base Radiant Tint do all of the work. Concealing. Love their wand. It's very thin so it's perfect for the under eye area. Sometimes what I like to do is just apply the Radiant Tint and then set it directly with powder. I don't even use foundation anymore. But for today, just to show you how the powder or the, even the concealer sits on top of a different product I'm using. This. Right. I personally like blending this with my concealer brush. This is from the Anne Flutes brushes. And I feel like I get the most coverage when I'm blending it out with a brush. Sometimes I like to go in with a sponge and that's what I'll use on the other side just to show you. But I find that it works well for both. But like I said, I have some blemishes right here on my cheek area. So I'm just gonna apply a little bit of that Radiant Scent. Okay, and then for this side of my face, I'm gonna use a sponge. Use a little bit of setting spray. Sometimes I like to go over like the brush with the sponge to just have a more natural look. But I find that I like it better when I blend it in with the brush first. That way it provides the maximum coverage that I need. And then when I feel like it looks a little too heavy, I just go in with the 
sponge. And the Radiant Stint actually reminds me of the Too Faced Born This Way multi-use concealer because of how, you know, it covers up and blurs out the imperfections right in my eyes, but it's not matte at all and it doesn't feel like too much on your face and it is very lightweight as well. I don't feel anything on my face whenever I'm using this concealer. It's a very similar formula. It provides maximum coverage, but it's not matte. But it's also not too hydrating wherein your products will slip off of it or it will wear off or it, your lids will look oily. So now we're using the Milk Tint. I have this in the shade Macchiato. What it is, it's a three-in-one product. You can use it in your on your lids, your cheeks, and your lips. For today's video, I'm going to show you how I like to use it on my lids. Once I pull out the with applicator i like to wipe it off the sides because this product is very pigmented very similar to the rare beauty liquid blush and then what i like to do is just add one dot the closest that i can to my lid and then just blend that out with my ring finger as straight as i could like this one very thin i feel like it just adds another dimension to my lids and then once that's blended out like that what I like to use is a blending brush like this one and then I just blend it out to my crease to diffuse the product. I like that it just adds a touch of color to my lid so that there's a little bit of something there but not too much. For most like 3-in-1 products like this, I find that sometimes it definitely creases at the in the middle of the day but for this milk tint, it does not. Like It sets down by itself. You don't have to set it with powder afterward and it looks amazing at the end of the day. It just adds a little something on your lids without having to do that much work. The milk tint is super easy to use. As you can see, it took me like five minutes to do that. And then I'm, what I'm gonna use is just a liner to finish off the eye look. I'm using this one from Charlotte Tilbury. It's the Fiddle Talk Eyeliner. And I just like to tight line using this and add a little bit of a wing for a more complete look. So I just added contour and bronzer off camera and now we're gonna use the milk tint as a blush. Like I said, with this product, one dot goes a long way. And what I love about this is that it gives you enough time to blend it out. First, I'm gonna use my ring finger to blend it out to show you guys if you don't have any tools, how easy it is to use. And I find that blending with the finger is the best way to apply products like cream products on your face because the warmth of your finger really just blends it out well. Because I have it on my lids as well, I didn't want my blush to be too, you know, too pigmented because it will all just fight each other. So something very subtle since I will be using the same tint for my lips. Other side of my face, I'm gonna be blending it with a brush. So I'm using this one from Morphe 2. As you can see, it's already very like out there. So I'm gonna use my finger again just to tone it down a bit. Now for the lips. So again, Milk Tint in Macchiato. Wiping off the edges around the bottle so I don't apply too much. What's great about this is even though the doe foot applicator is very chunky, it's easy to apply. So I'm gonna stop talking and apply this first. Okay, so camera died as I was applying my lippy. And with any tint kind of formula for my lips, I find that it could be really drying. So what I like to use is a lip mask underneath it so that it doesn't dry it out. However, it is a little sip slippery. So I don't recommend, you know, immediately eating or drinking after applying the milk tint on your lips. Give it some time to dry out and set on your lips. That way it won't transfer as easily and won't like, you know, smudge all over your face. Some would like to set it with powder. I don't typically do that. I just reapply if it goes away. It doesn't bother me at all. As long as I like how it looks, it's easy to use and it's not too drying. I like it. So here is how the milk tint looks on my lids, my cheeks, 
and my lips. Now to set everything, we're gonna use the All About That Base Velvet Setting Powder so it blurs out blemishes as well. What I love about Get Ready With Me Cosmetics, I forgot to add this, is that on the back of their packaging, actually on their packaging itself, it always has like a month, date, and year. You can add the date that you opened it so you know when it goes bad. Not a lot of cosmetics do that and I honestly just typically would estimate when i opened it so i thought i thought that was a good like addition to the product like a good detail to add anyway velvet setting powder really love the packaging for the price i think it comes in a really good packaging has your mirror a puff and then you know your powder down there so i don't really like using the puff that comes with it i like using a sponge instead because i feel like it adds more coverage especially if i'm using something that's a little bit more light to medium coverage in terms of foundation so i'm setting my face with a setting spray first this just to refresh my face since it's been a while since apply i applied my base products so airbrush flawless setting spray from charlotte tilbury and then my damp sponge what i like to use is this edge right here the flat part and i just press it against the powder make sure i picked up some product right there and then what i like to do is just start here and start applying it this way i find that it provides the maximum coverage to give you that blurring effect now let's apply powder especially on the under eye area So I'm using the shade Litten, which is the third lightest shade. It is a light medium shade with warm undertones. I had to settle with a warm undertone. I'm usually a neutral, but it went out of stock so quickly and it was the only one I could find. Then remember I had blemishes here. Okay, giving you a quick side-by-side -side reference without powder with powder as you can see it kind of re really created that kind of matte finish like it really does look like it has powder here the shine is gone but it doesn't look too cakey in my opinion what do you guys think so of course you have a lot of shine here then on this side it just feels more finished so I'm gonna continue and apply powder on this side of my face, setting with set it with setting spray and finish the rest of my makeup. And I'll give you guys my initial thoughts on Get Ready With Me Cosmetics. Okay, so here is my finished makeup look. Added some lashes, some highlighter on my inner corners and nose. I didn't add any highlighter on my cheeks, just so you guys could see how the milk tint looks like without any highlighter. And as you can see, it's not that matte and it still has like a nice sheen to it. And the velvet setting powder did not mattify my face at all. It's just very like velvet blurring effect, which I love as you can see on the earlier clip where I had one side with the powder, one side without. It really shows a huge difference in terms of one side looks a lot smoother than the other but it doesn't look powdery at all i just like how it looks like it's blurring but not mattifying not too mattifying where it, it looks cakey and dry so here is a zoomed in version as you can see it just really adds a nice filter on top of my face it is not too cakey and makeupy just enough to blur out those imperfections like I have veins here that is usually picking through you can still see some of my blemishes like this little breakouts right here some of my scarring it looks blurred out so I'm really enjoying the velvet setting powder and that's how I like to use it on top of my sheer coverage makeup and like I said on lazy days what I like to do is apply the radiant tint all over my face in terms of areas where I have 
blemishes that I want to cover up and then just set the rest of my face with the powder for a more sheer coverage look. If there's only one thing that you could buy from these three products, what would it be? I highly recommend the Velvet Setting Powder. I've only loved the one other setting powder that's from a local brand in the Philippines and I think this is a good alternative for days where I need a little bit more coverage or for days where I just want to throw on my concealer and then set it with powder and I'm good to do good to go this is the product for that however i do love every single thing that i've tried so far packaging is amazing price points amount of product that you get and the formula of these products is just top rated i mean if you want to see my hourly check-ins please continue watching but okay so here is a check-in first check-in it's been three hours since i applied makeup i just stayed inside the house you know filming moving around but i think so far so good as you can see it still looks the same eyes under eye area a little bit of like wearing out in terms of like creasing but on my nose area, it still looks very smooth. I haven't like dabbed any powder or sprayed any setting spray on my face. It still looks pretty good, holding up pretty well indoor. Eyes also look good, not much creasing. Blush is okay. I haven't reapplied really makeup. I already ate like two donuts with this one. I haven't reapplied any lippy. I think it looks great overall. And that's your three hour mark. Okay, so this is our last check in. It's been eight hours since I applied my makeup. And first thing I noticed was my under eye area. I feel like I have bags now. It looks like the concealer is wearing out. It's not the best in terms of longevity, but if you're just running out to run errands for a couple of hours, I think it's fine. But for all day wear, as you can see, you can see my bags already. It's not as brightened anymore. Does it crease? Yes, there is some creasing over there. And then, but overall, like for the velvet setting powder, I don't see any, you know, breaking apart in terms of that. It's wearing out on my nose area. This is no retouching, okay? So no retouching at all. And it's wearing out on this nose area right here, just a little bit. From far away, it's totally fine. And then when it comes to the milk tint, eyelids are still looking good. No hard creasing in that area, a little bit here. But other than that, it looks fine. Blush is still intact, as you can see, very nice, subtle. And then my lips have already worn out, pero it left a nice tint. Like my lips don't look too, too bare. And so far, I'm really loving it. Um, the radiance tint, like I said, longevity-wise, not the best. But overall, I love every single item from Get Ready With Me Cosmetics. And I'm excited to try everything out. So yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. Once again, it's Eunice. See you guys next time. Bye!